In this video, we will be discussing the installation of disc brake drop spindles made by MP. This is a 1969 VW Beetle. We will be converting it to the 5x205 lug pattern using this kit. Okay, let's get this wheel off. Now we get to the fun part. I've loosened the nuts already. In this case, the 19 millimeters on the ball joints, 17 millimeter on the tie rod end. Typically, this would be a castle nut. Uh, it appears this tie rod end has already been replaced. The castle nut's been replaced with the locking nut. Tie rod ends and ball joints can be kind of stubborn at times uh, to get them to come out of their seats. Uh, these ball joints have been in these cars a lot of years. Um, Oftentimes, you can get lucky with just striking the spindle and they will come loose. If they don't, well, then you may have to invest in a pickle fork. The trick is, take the pickle fork, strike it on the end, they come loose. The disadvantage to this method is, the pickle fork can tear the boot. Next, you'll need to remove the brake line. Um, you'll need to start here, loosen the brake line here first, then at the backing plate, break these loose. You may want to have something on the floor as you will get some brake fluid tripping from there. This brake may not have been working at all as I don't see any brake fluid coming out. Oh, there's a little bit. From there, with this loose, we've got the lower ball joint loose. This is the eccentric cam. This is what they will be using in order to perform the alignment. This does adjust the camber of the wheel. Pull the weight up off of it. Now if you do still have a stubborn ball joint, this is where the pick a fork or even a good pry bar will come in. And we're ready for the new parts. Here we'll put on the new spindle. The pry bar comes in handy here. Don't forget your original washers. When tightening down the ball joint nuts, the lower one can be a bit finicky. The trick to that is to apply pressure to it with a floor jack. If you jack that ball joint up into the spindle tight, it can't really spin. That makes it a heck of a lot easier to tighten it down. If the eccentric cam starts to spin, a set of channel locks can assist you in that. Keep in mind, you will need to get the vehicle aligned afterwards. It's important to know when you go to install your drop spindles. In May of 1968, Volkswagen introduced a larger tie rod end. A little stronger in design, a little harder to bend. However, when you go to put in your new drop spindles, all of the new spindles have the larger, later 1969 style tie rod end. So when you go to put on your brand new drop spindles and your tie rod end doesn't fit because it's too small, good to know. You have the early ones. When that situation is encountered, the earlier tie rod end will have to be replaced with a 69 and later tie rod end so that it will fit the spindle. If the ball starts to spin inside of the tie rod end, 
that'll make it very difficult to get the nut tight. The new replacement tie rod ends have an Allen key slot to assist you to keep that from spinning during tightening. When installing the bearing races into the rotors, the manufacturer strongly recommends the use of a press. The press helps ensure that the race will be installed straight into the rotor and greatly reduces breakage of the rotor. Keep in mind the manufacturer offers no warranty whatsoever against broken rotors and they say the use of a press greatly helps reduce the possibility of breaking one. It's imperative to remember that as you're installing the race, if it does start going in crooked, stop the procedure, pull the rotor out, turn it over, bang the race out with a screwdriver or any kind of a pry tool that you can use to make that work, and do start the process over. If you proceed, you will break the rotor and you will have to buy another one. That race is properly installed. Turn the rotor over and repeat the process on the opposite side. When packing the wheel bearings, pretty simple procedure. You want to take enough grease, put a ball of grease in your palm. You want to take the bearing firm and simply start scraping the grease off of your palm to get that nice and packed. As you're packing the bearings, you should start to see the grease start coming through the needles on the other side. You want to repeat that with both the inner and outer bearings. Bearings are now ready to install. Once the wheel bearing is nice and packed, place the bearing into the race, grease seal. This is a good opportunity to use one of the larger bearing race installers. Gently tap into place. We're ready to put the rotor onto the car. A few important steps to be taken prior to installing. You do want to put some grease into the rotor. This will ensure good lubrication for the bearings throughout their life. Secondly, very important to use a brake cleaner of some sort to clean the cosmoline away from the rotor. These are packed in cosmoline, which is a rust inhibitor, and it keeps the rotor from rusting during transit transport on its way to your car. Uh, if you do not clean this cosmoline off, it will cake up on the brake pads, you will get brake squeal, brake vibration, ultimately it will warp the rotors, and again, you're buying new rotors. Make sure the rotor is nice and clean prior to install. Let's go ahead and throw the rotor on. Make sure you get the brake rotor nice and clean. Very important to get the cosplane off. One question we get a lot is about the brake calipers. How do the brake pads sit in these when properly installed? A little different than a normal car, and if you haven't seen it done, they can be a little alarming. The pads simply sit like so, keeping the springs flat. That's how they will sit when installed on the vehicle. When installing your brake calipers, these torque to 29 foot pounds.
After you've got the caliper tight to the bracket, you want to check your spacing here to make certain that the caliper is centered compared to the rotor. There are instances due to machining tolerances where the caliper could be a little off-centered. The manufacturer does offer shims included in the kit. These are used to space the caliper left or right depending upon what is needed uh, based on these gaps. In this instance, nothing was needed. This caliper fit perfectly right out of the box. Included in this kit are longer brake lines as the brake line positioning on the caliper is further away than what the standard wheel cylinder would have been. I'm going to install these We will be using aftermarket wheels on this vehicle, so wheel studs will be necessary. A little Loctite on a wheel stud. We're ready for our wheel.